So these Ya'juj and Ma'juj, they are dry and harsh in nature. And when they come out, they're going to come out so quickly and so fast that you will not be able to stand in front of them. You have to run away from them. And Ya'juj is a tribe. And Ya'juj is another tribe. But they are related. And they are actual human beings. Ya'juj and Ma'juj are human beings. They are tribes that actually exist on earth. They existed close to the time of Musa alayhi salam. In an era of a great, great king named Dhul Qarnayn. Anyone heard of Dhul Qarnayn? Dhul Qarnayn, the man of the two horns. He was called that name because he used to wear a, a hat that had two horns coming out of it. Dhul Qarnayn was an extremely powerful king. And he was a worshipper of Allah, a righteous, just Muslim king. Among the best that ever existed on earth. And he had so much power, so much authority, that his kingdom reached, why do I say almost? Because there were parts of the world where civilization hadn't reached yet, as today. But whatever existed in that time, wherever civilization reached, Dhul Qarnayn had power to there, right to the end part of civilization. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Dhul Qarnayn in Surah Al Kahf. It speaks about Dhul Qarnayn as being that king. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him, as I said, as a just and fair leader who used to say, whoever does good, then we will reward him. And whoever does wrong, then we will punish him. A punishment in this earth and in the hereafter will be punished by his Lord, a punishment that is unheard of. So he was very strict on laws, that, laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. And he was very rewarding and generous for those who do good. So everybody loved him. And he brought justice this way. Very harsh on the wrong and very generous on the good. And Allah tells us about Dhul Qarnayn describing his amount of kingdom. Saying that you know, in a very allegorical, beautiful way of language. Saying that Dhul Qarnayn, he reached a very far distance in land. He used to go around the whole world to see who is being oppressed, who is doing good to reward them, bringing justice between people. He used to physically go out with his army like that, looking everywhere as far as he can. That's what he spent his life in, traveling the world and applying justice and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everywhere he went. So Allah describes one of his journeys. He went one time to establish justice and when he reached, Allah says in the Quran, when he reached the place of the setting of the sun, he found it setting in a murky pond or in a murky water. What does this mean? Now, there are non-Muslims out there who try to use this against us. They say, what's this Quran talking about science? How can a sun set inside of water when we know that the earth rotates around the sun? On how can a man reach the setting of the sun? The sun doesn't set, the earth rotates around. You can't really reach the sun. There's no such thing. What these miserable people don't understand is the language of the Quran. The Arabs at the time of the Prophet ﷺ understood it better than these miserable people. And if there was any problem with it, they would have beaten them to find a fault in the Quran. Trust you me. So these people come and use half suck twisty English. And they try to uh, you know, explain the Qur'an through their miserable ways. The Qur'an here is talking allegorically. Because the Qur'an addresses human beings. And when you address human beings, and especially the whole world, it has to address them in a way where everybody could understand simple language. Allah is saying allegorically in a beautiful speech that, in two things, He reached a place where it looks like the sun is setting. It looks like that. It's like saying... Are the sun set behind the mountain, behind the hill? If you go behind the hill, will you find the sun? No, we say it's set behind the sun, behind the mountain. Everybody uses that language. Or you say, oh, look at that rainbow. It starts from there and ends there. But it doesn't really end there. It doesn't even come on earth. So it's what the eye sees. Allah says, when he reached where it seemed like the sun was setting. In other words, Allah is telling us, Idul Qarnayn reached a very, very far end of the world. He said he found it setting in a murky pond, meaning it looked like as if it was setting inside the ocean. And it looked murky to him. Because when the sun is setting, you could see a very strange appearance on the surface of the ocean. Allah called it Hami'ah, 
murky or a strange appearance or a, a foggy appearance. He found the sun setting there, meaning there was no more land beyond where he reached, meaning Dhul-Qarnayn reached the farthest land where nobody could reach even further. There was no more civilization after there. That's what that verse is talking about. He said he found people there that could hardly understand normal speech. They were very primitive in speech. They said, Ya Dhul Qarnayn, O Dhul Qarnayn, they knew he was the king. Can you please help us? Ya'juj and Ma'juj, they are corruptors on earth. Now I want you to analyze with me over here. These people who are complaining to Dhul Qarnayn, they were very primitive in lifestyle and in language. So he reached the border of the world where civilization was so behind. And they were trying to explain to him about this other civilization that are even worse than them. That are even more primitive, worse and corruptive than these people that he just met. So he said, Oh, Dhul Qarnayn, Ya'juj and Ma'juj are very corruptive on earth. They kill, they take, they steal, they do all these things. Can we give you some help, bring you some people, so that we can help you to make a a barrier a barrier between us and them so that they can't come to us and they can be cut off from the world then the Qarnayn replies he said Allah has already given me enough power I don't need your help thank you for offering but what I want you to help me with is just a little bit of may of starting off the foundations of the wall I'll make between you and them a wall zubar al-hadid bring me some of your Zubar al-Hadid, it's a kind of metal, like brass, very strong metal, that can withhold any kind of environment, climate change. It doesn't rust very quickly, it doesn't, or it doesn't rust at all, and it doesn't break. Zubar al-Hadid. So it's the metal that cannot get rusted. So he, he, he built it in such a way that he ordered for them to blow heat. So he melted it and molded it in such a way that it became so solidified, so strong through heat and through steel that he said Hatta إِذَا جَعَلَهُ نَارًا He made it melting because of fire. He said آتُونِي أُفْرِغْ عَلَيْهِ قِطْرَ Bring me this other type of material that I may add to it قِطْرَ that will make it extra strong. So the whole idea here Allah is telling us that he built a wall or a barrier or a dam something that was so strong so impermeable that nothing can reach and nothing can come, nothing can break it down anymore. No climate, no people, no weaponry, nothing. Allah says in the Quran, He said, No one was able to break through it and no one was able to overpower it. It was such a strong wall, impermeable to anything. And when Dhul Qarnayn looked at the people, they looked at this wall and they said, Wow, this is a very strong wall. And Dhul Qarnayn wanted to teach them a lesson finally. He said, Qala hadha rahmatun min Rabbi. He said, This is from the mercy of my Lord. What's the mercy here? That He allowed us to prevent you from the corruption of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Then He said, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي جَعَلَهُ دَكَّاءَ وَكَانَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي حَقَّا He said, now, this, is, this wall has been built there, it's strong. This is a mercy from your Lord for now. But, when the promise of my Lord has arrived, Allah has decreed something that's going to happen. Allah will make this wall destroyed he will destroy it dakka meaning it will be level with the ground the promise of my lord is truly going to come no doubt what is he saying here he's saying that the ajuj and ajuj will be blocked off the world from the world until a certain time that is going to come allah it is only allah who will destroy who will allow for this wall to be destroyed and when it is destroyed this ajuj and ajuj will come out Allah says, وَتَرَكْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَمُوجُ فِي بَعْضٍ وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّونِ فَجَمَعْنَاهُمْ جَمْعًا He said, and so we left them. يَأْجُوجُ مَأْجُوجُ We left them. And we left the people like this in this way. يَأْجُوجُ مَأْجُوجُ Away from the people. And they living among one another. 
Allah says, but we will surely bring everyone, including Ajuj and Ajuj, everyone back when the trumpet is blown. So no one has been able to break through this wall ever since. And Allahu A'lam, if anybody has ever reached that place, but if you want to know where it is from the tafsir that I've read, and Allah knows best, of course, they indicate that their, situ their position is somewhere near the upper part of the world, towards the North Pole. So towards the Russian areas, Russian areas in that, in that, in that sort of region, higher up towards the North Pole area. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best exactly where they are.